Good morning, ladies, or anyone else that might be watching this video. I welcome you. I hope that you're in class this morning to where uh, I can talk to you face to face. I'm looking forward to that time. And we've been having more each Sunday, so I, uh, I pray that many of you will be able to come this Sunday. But if not, uh, I hope you enjoy this, or maybe it's not a real enjoyable lesson, but it's a needful one. And um, I told my pastor the other day, I said, I'm really getting tired of teaching on judgment. But it's a time in the time that we're living right now, during this pandemic, I've asked myself through the whole thing, is this an attack of Satan or is it judgment from God? And I've kind of come to the conclusion that God has had enough of the sins of this nation and the world as a whole. Today, our lesson is taken from Amos chapter 4 and 5. It's called Religious But Rebellious. Lots of folks in that condition. You know, in 1 Samuel 5, 22, Samuel says to King Saul, it's better to obey than it is to sacrifice. Now, these were kind of unusual words for to be spoken by a prophet to a king in uh, this particular time, especially a king uh, uh, to God's chosen people. The entire Old Testament is filled with, with sacrificial rules and requirements uh, from the types of sacrifices necessary to the number of times each day that the Israelites were called to a general prayer time. And Daniel tells us even which way they were to face. They were to face uh, toward Jerusalem as they prayed. And not a lot's changed on that end as far as the Muslims are concerned. They still have that call to prayer each day. But God said, forget the sacrifices. Forget the rules and regulations. I need obedience now. Amos, along with Samuel, reminds the people of this fact. Uh, we begin today's thoughts with Amos chapter 4 and most of chapter 5. Now, for the next three chapters, chapter 4, 5, and 6 in the book of Amos, we see God dealing specifically with the northern tribes known as Israel. The two southern tribes, of course, were known as Judah. In chapter 4, we see where God has judged Israel uh, in the past for their sinful lifestyle. In chapter 5, we see where God will judge them in the future for their lifestyle. That is still to come. And then in chapter 6, we see Amos in the present tense, begging his people to ask forgiveness for their sins. That's, that's the prayer we need to have for our nation. I even had my doctor tell me yesterday when he called for a conference call, we need to pray for our nation. And it thrilled my heart that he cared enough uh, to ask me to pray with him for our nation. In chapter four, Amos begins with kind of a sarcastic tone in his remarks to the rulers of uh, Bashan. Now Bashan was a territory between the mountainous regions of Gilead and Mount Hermon on the east side of the Jordan River. That was the tribes that remained there and did not cross. Uh, into the actual land that God gave. It was known, uh, uh, Bashan was known for its fertile land, uh, the great, the grassland that it had, and the fine breed of cattle that they produced. So let's read the first three verses of this and see if we can figure out who Amos is really addressing when he says to hear, you cows of Bashan, hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountains of Syria, of Samaria, I'm sorry, who are, on, who are on the mountains of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, 
who say to your husbands, bring now that we may drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness, but hold, the days are coming upon you when they will take you away with meat hooks and the last of you with fish hooks. Now, it appears that uh, Amos is speaking to women here when he says, say to your husbands, uh, bring me something to drink. But, and it, when we refer to cows, when we use the term cow, it's usually in a feminine for, for female gender, where we use bulls for, for the ma male gender. But notice what kind of females these were. They oppressed the poor, they crushed the needy, and they were drunkards. This sounds more like he's speaking to someone in authority over others when he says, we will carry you away with meat hooks in your nostrils. Uh, you know, homosexuality is not a new sin. And Romans 1, 26 through 32 is probably the strongest condemnation of homosexuality uh, that we hear from God and the judgment that he addresses to this particular sin. So that may have been the case. We know the story of Nero, the ruler of Rome. And Nero's uh, hom homosexuality act, homosexual acts, and the ugliness and the defilement of that is actually what caused the downfall of Rome. Amos says, this is what you've done, and this is your punishment. You will be let out with a meat hook through your nose to a place you will, where you will remain a harlot for the rest of your lives. Slaves were often led around by their masters by attaching a ring in their nostrils and controlling their every movement, taking them where they wanted them to be. Again, we see bit, Amos's bitter sarcasm. Maybe that was the only way to get through to these people. But we see, we see Amos again speak to them in verses 4 and 5. Enter Bethel and transgress. In Gilgal, multiply transgressions. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a thank offering also from that which is leavened and proclaim freedom offerings. Make them known for so you love to do, you sons of Israel, declares the Lord God. Religious, but rebellious. Obey, obedience, not sacrifice. He says, come to Bethel and Gilgal, where you can offer your sacrifices every morning and give your tithes every three, three days. Well, Bethel is the place where the Israelites worship the golden calf. And Gilgal was the first place the Israelites came to when they crossed the Jordan River. Both of these places were hotbeds of iniquity for the Jews in the times of Amos. And he's almost being, uh, saying, come to the, you want, you want to see him? Then come to the place where the sin is great. It's a little different, but we'll see God's love shown before this is over. From verse 6 through 11 in the fourth chapter of Amos, we see a common phrase in this verse. A sad phrase that I'm sure it grieved God to have to say it. Yet you have not returned to me. God said, I have brought you to starvation, yet you haven't returned to me. I've withheld rain from you 
and from your crops and your livestock, yet you have not returned to me. I rained on cities all around you, but not on you, but yet you've not returned to me. I sent, I sent scorching winds and insects to devour your, your crops, yet you have not returned to me. I sent plagues like the plagues of Egypt upon you, yet you did not return to me. I killed your young men in battle until the stench of their dead bodies made you sick, yet you have not returned to me. I have overthrown you in every way, but still you have not returned to me. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something we're going through? That's the answer. Just return to the God who loves us and offers us the righteousness that only he can give. Verses 12 and 13 are definitely the key phrases, the key verses for chapter 4. It says, Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. And here's the statement. That should break everyone's heart. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts, he who makes dawn into darkness and treads on the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name in case you might not know. Prepare to meet thy God. You know, there's an old song that we used to sing years ago entitled, Prepare to Meet Thy God. And the first verse of that song says, Careless soul, why do you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear you not the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet that God. And then the chorus, the couple, there's a couple of lines in the chorus I wanted you to hear. It says, oh, how sad to face the judgment, unprepared to meet that God. Hebrews 9.27 says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. We'll all face the judgment. But God's love still remains. We go to the remainder of chapter 5. God says, hear, listen, listen to what I'm saying to you. Chapter 5 is the funeral song for the nation of Israel. God said the cities of Israel... Where there were thousands, now we'll have hundreds. Where there were hundreds, now they'll have ten. He, began, he begged them to leave those wicked cities and don't throw away the righteousness that is offered to them. Amos goes on to remind them of the God of heaven and earth and all the wondrous and awesome things he created. And he finishes by saying, the Lord is his name. The key verse in chapter 4 is, yet you have not returned to me. The key verse in chapter 5 is, seek me that you may live. We're going to read verses 4, 5, 6, 8, and 14. I will remind you of that again. As we get to them, <clears throat> right now we'll go with four, five, and six. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me that you may live, but do not resort to Bethel, and do not come to Gilgal, nor cross over to Beersheba, for Gilgal will certainly go into captivity, 
and Bethel will come to trouble. Seek the Lord that you may live. Notice that again. Or he will break forth like a fire, O house of Joseph, and it will consume with none to quench it for Bethel. And then in verse 8, he reminds them of who this Lord God is. The Lord God of hosts is his name. Seek him that you might live. In verse 8, verse eight he says, It's he who made the Pilates and Orion and changes deep darkness into morning, who also darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea, who pours them out on the surface of the earth. Again, the Lord is his name. God is always waiting with a heart full of love for his children to return to him. I don't, I don't know where you stand in your relationship to God this morning, but he does, and so do you. Judgment, sure. We will all face it someday. Don't you want to hear the Lord say to you, you've been a good and faithful servant. Welcome home, my child. That's what, that's what I want to hear. God bless you. I love you.